Joining us now is a man whose tickets for his tour will go on sale this Friday at BillBurr.com forward slash tour. Bill Burr, slight return. He'll be in cities like Tulsa, Philadelphia, Chicago, all across the country. And he's going to be the first comedian to ever play fucking Fenway. Hell yeah. New Netflix special June 6th. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest comedians to ever be birthed into our earth, Bill Burr. Yeah! Let's go, Bill. Hey, how are you? That's a hell of an intro. Hey, you deserve it. Every single piece of it because that brain of yours is so goddamn magical. Bill, how you doing, man? How's life? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. You know, I'm uh, here, I'm working. I'm uh, editing a film right now. So uh, this is a welcomed break. Yeah, you're like super hands-on. F is for family, obviously. You made that, created that. You're editing a fucking film? Like right in the middle of the process of on premiere? What is it, premiere? What are you guys, what are you editors? Or Final Cut. Final Cut. Right now you're in the middle of doing that? Is that like, uh, is it a movie you're in? And do we know the name of this movie? And when's it coming out? Uh, yeah, I am in it. I wrote it with a buddy of mine, Ben Tischler, and uh, directed the thing and all of that stuff. <laughs> Stepped into that somehow. So my summer is living with this thing. But it's been a lot of fun, man. It's fucking wild. It's really, uh, am I not supposed to curse on this show? No, Sorry. no, let it be, let it be. Oh, wait, twice. wait, you said fucking Fenway. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> See, I set the tone there, trying to let you know, you know what I mean, early. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's been, a, it's been a lot of fun. Old Dads, fun. I believe, is the name of the movie. Can't wait to watch that. You're going on tour in September. So all summer with this movie, directing and editing and cutting. Then you're going on tour. You're doing Fenway. When do you have time for all this? Are you just always creating shit? When do you do the, like, the set you're going to do in Fenway, by the way? Hey, yeah. hey, here we uh, go. Yeah. Like, when do you put that set together? When are you able to work on that while doing all your other shit? Uh, the weekends. <laughs> 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 no, it's a little, it's, yeah, I am a little straight out right now. I, it just, it was weird. Like the pandemic, there was nothing going on. And then all of this other stuff, everything just landed at the same time. So I think that that's why. But uh, I, I think I'm, I'm not going to do anything next year. Smart. <laughs> that's what I, famous last words. Smart. Hey, how do you know what to do, what not to do? Like, in, like to find that balance between, yeah, you're like a legit actor, now director, everything else. And then your stand up is unbelievable. How do you find that balance? I haven't. <laughs> That's why I'm taking a year off, right? Yeah, yeah. I haven't. I got to figure out how to, like, uh, I don't even want to get into it. It's just like every year I'm like, why the fuck am I working right up until Christmas? Every year I say, fucking give me two weeks off before Christmas. And I don't, I don't know. I, I got to I gotta learn. Uh, you know, it just gets, it gets away from me every year. Every year it just gets away from me. And then I just go, what the fuck? How did I get all this shit? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's something I'm, I'm working on. And what? I haven't figured it out. And this is going to be another year where I'm doing too much shit. <laughs> hey, I just got a text. Do you want to do this phone or this week? You do. I'm saying no. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! This is new Bill Burr. That's yeah! Right. Yeah! I saw your guns on this podcast and now I feel strong. Yeah! <laughs> Fucking Bill Burr taking a stand for his life. Hell yeah. Yeah. I bet you do more shit next year than you did this year, and that's the way it's going to be until you retire, pal. You're a goat now at this point, so everything's going to be on the table for you. Whenever you think about doing Fenway and doing this tour, what is, you know, because the obviously the Chris Rock, Will Smith shit is huge in the comedy world. Then you follow that up nah, with Chappelle. that's over. Chappelle, though. That's over. Then Chappelle. Nobody's talking about it. What about Chappelle? That's Dale, man, that's old bread. <laughs> You're going to lose a filling on that. Both of those, Chappelle and Chris Rock? Well, I mean, they, you know, Will Smith went to India with some publicists to take pictures in front of the Taj Mahal, so he's all healed. <laughs> he's back. He's good. I love that you have to go all the way to India to not know that you don't get up in the middle of an awards show and slap somebody. <laughs> it wasn't until I went to the Taj Mahal where I finally understood. Um... No, then they got that other, the other kid just seemed like, uh, you know, he had some mental issues. I don't know. I don't want But I mean, look, first of all, that's been happening to comedians my entire career. Okay. Yeah, everybody has at some point in your career, somebody's going to come up on stage. <laughs> well, I was going to talk about that because it felt like the Chris Rock, Will Smith thing, 
uh, was an opportunity for a lot of comedians to chat about how like, hey, this isn't okay because we're just trying to make people laugh. And I assume you guys have to deal with more people getting offended by your shit and saying things. And then it openly being- Well, listen to those comedians who comment on this shit right after. Okay. They're trying to get friends. Okay. They're trying to act like they're affected by what the fuck happened. They're just jumping on a fucking... I mean, I shouldn't say all of them, but generally speaking, it's just like... It's like... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I obviously didn't like what was going to happen, but I was going to jump on it and, and, and add fuel to the fire. You don't want to encourage other lunatics to do that, which is why I don't understand why we're still talking. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. They old <laughs> bread, and then here we are 10 minutes later. You got a cavity on this fucking bread, dude. You fucking broke a right. tooth on it. You had a good joke, too. Taj Mahal, the whole thing. I'll hook you up. Yeah, I'll you had the whole up. thing. But I thought, at, the same as you, I thought there was a lot of like grandstanding, like, hey, here's our moment to be able to come together and say we're being attacked. But then the Chappelle thing happened, and it was like, okay, so maybe they're on to something. You said every comedian has experienced somebody rushing the stage. Obviously, the Philadelphia set with right. you. Maybe not everybody, but, you know, everybody is, I mean... I had a woman come up on stage one time, <laughs> chase me around the stage at Dangerfields. I just picked the mic stand up and I was like, lady, lady, you can't do this. And I was just backing around the <laughs> stage. And just like the Oscars, nobody did anything. <laughs> all part of the bit? Or they just wanted to watch it all kind of burn down? Because that Philadelphia set, I mean, is that the greatest comedy you've ever done in your entire life whenever you just told Philadelphia to go fuck themselves for what? Seven minutes? You had to <laughs> count down or however long it was? Is that the, the rowdiest crowd you've ever been in front of? Um, The largest rowdy crowd, but not the rowdiest. No, there's been others. I mean... Yeah, no, there's been others where you think, like, yeah, something bad is really going to happen here. That was just, you know, they were just having fun with me. That's the thing. You know, they they were just having fun, whatever. I had fun back with them and and, 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 and whatnot. So uh, I don't know what to tell you, Pat. You know, <laughs> I like I don't know. I just didn't know, no, don't know when stand-up became, like, you, you, I feel like you're going on, like, meet the press now. Like, what do you think about uh, the security parameters at the local chuckle hut? It's like, I don't fuck. I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know. I have no idea. Well, I think there has been quite an interesting thing because, and I think the last time you were on here, we chatted about this. You and Chappelle, and I honestly believe this outside looking in, and I think you said, oh, the deep state made us do it or whatever, but it felt like... There was a time where stand-up comedians weren't able to say shit there for a little bit. And I know you're going to say that's not real, but there was a lot of comedians that felt that, and there was a lot of things that happened. Then whenever you came out with uh, White Tiger, I believe, and then he had sticks and stones or whatever. <laughs> whatever. It was Paper Tiger, Paper Tiger. I think it was White Lion. <laughs> White Lion. <laughs> paper Tiger, Paper Tiger. You, it was black and white. But it feels like you two came out and were like, you guys, you guys emptied Can we the call chamber. Him White Tiger? <laughs> I like that better. It was a great it was unbelievable. I watched it. You did it in England. But it felt like you two came out and were still able and willing to say whatever. Do you take onus oh, on that? Shit. And do you think it is uh, still something that's happening where comedians aren't allowed to I talk about I just know that I'm going to name my next special White Tiger. I love that. I like how aggressive and effeminate it is all at the same time. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking amazing. It's good White balance. Tiger. Meow. I have some new jokes, honey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this, you would be the white tiger if we were to pick one, by the way, an incredible one. But Paper Tiger, did you feel that or no? Is that not a real thing that just comedians were making up? And do you feel like you can go on stage and joke about anything because it is an attempt at humor, even though some people get like very angry about some of the shit nowadays? I have not changed the way I do stand up, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. I just go up and I do it. And you know what? And people appreciate like doing that. I don't understand like. I don't know. I, I, I don't even pay attention to it. I don't to the point I don't even have an opinion on it. It's it's just people what are they gonna what are they gonna talk about? Pharmaceutical companies coming up with synthetic heroin and killing hundreds of thousands of their fellow countrymen and not going to jail? Or <laughs> or are they gonna get all bent out of shape because somebody said something at a funny bump? What's gonna affect their money less? So you do That's have, all that is. So That's you, all that is. You do have an opinion on it, though. You, I mean, you just said, like, a couple seconds ago, you don't even have an opinion about it because you can't change it, but you do have one. That was a very... Dug -a -dug -a -dab. Bum, 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 bum. We'll be right back here on TMZ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's 
It's amazing. Are you working comedy right now, like during the weekends? Are you doing that right now? Or are you in a, are I want to know when you're getting back together with your boy band. When are you finally going to, looks like you've been hitting the gym. Oh, 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 when are you going back out? There you go. Hey, I lost my voice. I've been smoking too many vitamins, but I still got the dance moves. I can keep up with the boys if I have to. Well, it's got to be great now that you're out of football that you can do a cycle and not have to worry about <laughs> <laughs> right? Listen, I am drug tested, okay? I am uh, not currently on a cycle, but that guy t on the other side of the screen over there, we are firm oh, believers yeah. that he is eating trembolone sandwiches uh -huh. over there, Bill Burr. That guy, every single morning. I love people that take steroids. Go on. <laughs> well, because they're, they're using their body to figure it out so it's safe. I mean, you had all the way back, Lyle Alzada was like going down the street wrestling yaks when he was taking it, rest <laughs> his soul. And now it's like a cream. And I figure by the time you podcast guys are done with roids, I'll be able to I'll be right. have a, an eight pack when I'm 80. That'd be fantastic. Well, I'm happy we could do those tests for you. Did you, Are you it baseball? should be legal like weed. They should just start legalizing everything. Bill, baseball. Whenever everybody was eating steroids, those balls were flying out of parks. Best time in the history of the MLB. Do you agree? Are you a baseball fan? I think money-wise it was a great, but I, I, I always, when uh, all people talk about is offense, I don't think you're a real a fan. Like my problem, like I'm enjoying the NBA, but like that whole little fucking half circle they put under the net where even the defensive guy has to get out of the way. You can only stand there for 2.8 seconds, then get out of the way. And then some guy's got a clear lane to go down and dunk the ball. And then he does a fucking Schwarzenegger pose down afterwards into the camera. It's like guys used to have to dunk on people. Like that whole thing, like, you know, fucking, well, what did I do here? William F. Cypher. I just got rid of me. No, you I swear happened. to God, anytime I touch my phone to make it do something, it won't do anything. But then I, I barely look at it, it does. Well, this no, guy's editing day, a movie you know? right now. <laughs> guys, you got a lot going on. Don't worry about it. The phone's fucking up, not you. That's all right. Um, well, I'm glad you guys wanted me to call in. I miss talking to you guys. You guys what? are one of my favorite podcasts out there. Well, you know, we know you're very Who busy. Is this again? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. TMZ, dude. <laughs> TMZ, Bill. No. Yes. You said you like defense. AJ and a lot of the people in the NFL, that's how they feel like the game has changed away from defense. Hey, when you first started talking to women, did you have to be spinning a football or you were <laughs> thinking about your hands and you couldn't you couldn't get a number? No, I'm a bit fidgety. I'm a fidgety hey, man, person. I just, you know, I saw you standing here in the cafeteria. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> hey, how you doing? Uh, how you doing? I don't know if you know this. I play sports. Got a tank top on. <laughs> that's not a good thing. And show Bill, you around you still... the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> you're an idiot. Bill, you still playing the drums? I know you're big into that. Yes, I am. Not as much as I would like to. And uh, just because I've been I've been busy. But, yeah, I have been. And uh, the other night uh, I did, a, uh, I did a, a room that had incredible sound. And uh, my drum teacher and I, we rented some. I said, why don't we just do a drum lesson in the fucking arena? So we got two Vista like, well, one Vista light and one uh, stainless steel kit. And we just had them facing each other and just jammed for like an hour. It was it was fucking amazing. Really was amazing. What arena? Uh, the Forum. Okay. Nice. Okay. You got a drum <laughs> lesson in the Forum? Just you and your drum? I mean, fucking. Hey, Bill. Jeez. Look at Hell. you. Not Look yet. at but this guy. Look at it. People don't understand when you do those places. You 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 rented the place. That's your Chuck E. Cheese for the day. So you can <laughs> rent whatever you want. If you're going to get your money's worth, I might as well get there, you know, a couple hours early. It's not going to affect the price. So, yeah, I had a good time. Uh, the arena tour here, arena and amphitheater tour. Uh, Bill Burr, slight return coming up on Friday. Arena, is anything different? It feels like, and this is going to sound like, obviously, an ignoramus, but obviously wearing a tank top and play football. The arena shows, different than theater shows? No, because it feels like Rogan's what? Rogan's doing arenas right now mm -hmm. with Chappelle. I think Segura had a arena. I think Kevin Hart has done arena in a stadium. Is there anything different to that that you have to think about for the show? Is that any, or are you just out there, hey, you're going to fucking laugh or not? Is it, There has to be full thought into that, isn't there? Well, other than imposter syndrome before you go out there. <laughs> I, sh I do not deserve this, is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's, 
yeah, there's there's definitely elements. A lot of it's mental, though. A lot of it's mental. But if you do it in the round and if you're in the middle, it's oddly, like, intimate. You know, it's not – people aren't as far away and you can actually uh, – you know, did I lose you guys? For some reason, I can't see you anymore. No, oh, they just went full screen on you to get your beautiful head. The white tiger was talking about. The white tiger, man. <laughs> Stand up <laughs> in an arena and it being intimate. So we just wanted that good white tiger shot there. But it's a round. Um, you got in the middle? You got a round stage for this? Yeah, or? occasionally I'll, I'll do one like in the round. And uh, I did the forum like that. I did MSG that way. And those are... Um, you know that's the most fun way I, I think probably do it. But even if you if, you, if they put this the stage at one end, it's 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 still the same thing. You got to make sure, you know, you're just listening to them. You're adjusting the whole time you're up there. Um, yeah, but it's it's a different sound than th than theater. I would say it's different. They're all a little bit different, but at the end of the day, you're kind of doing the same thing. That's like, you know, playing football your whole career. It was always a hundred yards. Right? Yeah. So you're still playing football. It's whether you got nervous about the size of the place you were playing in, I guess. The field doesn't change. The field doesn't change. Yeah. yeah. I understand completely that. Because some stadiums actually, as somebody that kicks balls, some stadiums in the field look smaller, some look bigger. Same exact yardage, though. Get it out of your head. Don't be so fucking soft. You know, a lot of that happens. What was your, fav what was your favorite place to kick? Um, I enjoyed Houston a lot because the fans were absurd. I mean, they were just so loud and insane. I enjoyed that a lot. I enjoyed that place a lot. No, but was there one where you just you just felt comfortable, and you, you what like which one did you do the best in? Oh, I have no fucking idea. We should go and get Chris Collinsworth on Pro Football Focus. He'll be able to tell us all that information. <laughs> I have no idea. I was just trying to get out of the game without being blamed for the loss, Bill. You know what I mean? Like, hey, here we go. Oh, Let's have right. a good time. Let's just keep it moving here. But there's some stadiums that feel better. I would assume, like, for you, as you go around and do this whole thing, is there some crowds that are different than other crowds? Have you have? you Is everybody loud? And has that changed the way you are if there's a more docile crowd out there? Did you ever miss a field goal to lose a game? Yes, oh yes, oh yes. Yeah, what is that like walking in? Nobody gives a shit about what it's like to do stand-up in an arena. What is it like to oh, fucking not this. walk into that locker room? Not this again. Well, I'll tell you what. There was uh, my junior college, Bill, all right? Maybe this can be on White Tiger. You can talk. I, I, I know how painful <laughs> this story is because now you're leaning and, like, <laughs> hands on the desk. I got 27 death threats after this game, Bill. It was a bad day. It was a bad time. Oh, Jesus. But going into the locker room, though. Half of them were real. No, it was all on Facebook. It was all real. Not like Twitter, 20% fucking fake. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're learning that right now while Elon's doing his thing with uh, uh, Twitter. But no, yeah, it was terrible. But the teammates, the losing of the game is obviously incredibly difficult. But if you're the reason for the loss, man, you feel terrible in there. I, I've never felt smaller. I mean, I actually am smaller than everybody in there, but... You feel like a little punk bitch, Bill. But you, you've never. Do they say anything to you, or they just let you sit in silence with what you just did to them? So that's interesting because I mean I did do it to them. I guess that is a good way to look at it. They never framed it that way, which is cool. You know, good friends. <laughs> Some people wouldn't talk. I mean, to they me. did work all week. Well, I did they too. Gave some you the would say, they, they <laughs> it up for you. Well, some would say I did as well, but 100% less work than everybody else. I agree completely. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but it's a real thing, though. Like, um, some people wouldn't talk. Other people would come give me fake, you know, like, hey, it's all right, not 100% your fault. It's like, well, kind of is, actually. I mean, if we're looking back on it, it is. So it's that team feel. Do you have that? Now, we can transition this into stand-up comedy. Do you have good shows, bad shows? Do you have a team around you that, like, talk about it? Do you ever recap shows, watch them back, listen to them back, do any film study or anything like that? Uh, I probably should, but I, I, I don't. No, it's I, worked uh, out thus I, far. Don't do it. It's worked out yeah. great. No, I used to do it. I kind of just shake it off. If it went bad, I just, uh, I recently, where the hell did I go? And I just, uh, yeah, it just didn't go well at all. I don't know. I'm so fucking busy. I can't remember. It wasn't a road gig. It was, uh, I popped in on a show and, um, yeah, it just, it just wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't what. <laughs> What, you get booed it out? why you do stand-up. Did you get booed out, or was it quiet? Was it uncomfortable? What was it? What was it was I was exhausted, and I wasn't in a good mood. Oh. And then I went up there, and they were young and full of life, and I just came in as this curmudgeon, <laughs> and I was trying out new shit. It's just, you know, it was just, <laughs> it was all there. It was the perfect storm. <laughs> 
And it was just kind of like one of those things where you're just like, oh, you know, whatever. And they just kind of afterwards like, what was with that guy? Everybody was like having fun. And then he showed up. It was one of those deals. I forget why I popped in somewhere. I can't remember. Isn't, but Bill, isn't that like the, the ingredients you need sometimes for some of your most special sets and some things that go amazing, I guess, for people that are fans of you, though? Um, like, I would imagine a pissed no, off Bill Burr. No, you, you want it to work. <laughs> it's like asking, isn't it great to miss a field goal? All right. Get have back it, to have the comedy. The upright. All right. Yep. Doesn't that help your other field goals? White go Tiger. Hard? Back yeah. to the stage, please. <laughs> Jesus, please. Miserable Bill is awesome, though. You know, for us. Hey, what is... Um, do you have a reoccurring uh, field goal kicker nightmare no. to this day, or have you been able to let it all go? No, it's that one. It's that what we just talked about. That's literally still think about it. We'd love West Virginia to win a national championship at some point in the very near future. We need to fucking continue to trust the climb, but we need to win so I can get that off my fucking heart, too. You know what I mean? Like, that'd be, that'd be great, Bill, if that was the case. Yeah, still think about it to this day. Do you ever think of starting a support group with other retired field goal kickers? Funny you say that. You guys that. can sit around and just talk about it. Funny you say that. Anytime a college kid misses, like uh, on a primetime game or something, and they get buried on the internet, these are 18, 19 year old kids, I'll send them a DM. I'll say, hey, life stinks right now. Okay, it's gonna suck. You're gonna think about this long, long time, but this is gonna harden you. You know, this is gonna callous you. Oh, yeah. This is gonna make you into somebody that's gonna go on to do special things, Bill. You know, I get them, <laughs> by the end of the message, Bill, I get them going. That's what I try to do. I try you my best. You turn into the white tiger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Bill, good luck with everything. Well, you know what, you got a good heart that you do that. That's good. Well, I just know how miserable it is. You know what I mean? I, do you mentor a lot of the stand-up comedians? Do they ask you questions or no? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, if, if uh, I'm around younger comedians, I always, if I see somebody funny, I always take, make sure I take the time to say that I, I thought that they were funny because guys did that for me. And I remember, you know, I, like I, you, you give somebody like juice, battery powered juice doing that for like six months. I remember Dave Chappelle, which is hilarious because I'm older than him, but he was always like showbiz older than me. I remember him a long time ago saying something complimentary when I had nothing going on. And I lived off of that for fucking four years. <laughs> I would have, be having bad shows and I would think Dave Chappelle said I'm funny. Dave Chappelle thinks I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck these people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, so, yeah, I definitely try to do that. And I think that that's an important part in any business of getting older is you don't resent younger people. You welcome them in and you try to help them out and you don't view them as your replacement or, or, or the worst. Try and compete with them um, by, you know, still wearing tank tops and gold chains and shit on your podcast. You know, this guy, Bill, we're so close. I was about to say you got a good heart and then bang, right at the end. Look at that. Had to well, do maybe, uh, maybe I'm not as, uh, not as involved as you. And I felt I was getting too tender. Maybe I got scared. Oh, this is a you thing. Maybe you the think. white tiger got a little scared of <laughs> No! Hey, the white tiger's not scared of anything, man. The white tiger's not scared of nothing. From now on, when I do your show, I want to be known as, we're bringing on the white tiger. <laughs> That's fucked up. Paper Tiger was great, by the way. It, it was. was. It was it one was. of the greatest specials of all time. That's 100% on me. Hey, I loved you when you played for the cults. But thank you. Thank you. That's very nice. I pronounced it wrong. It oh. was a joke about how you loved my special. You couldn't remember the fucking name of it. Well... I didn't hear the Oh, my God, am I bombing again? Yeah! <laughs> this is not you. This is not you. This is us. All right? Now, you might be tired. I turned into the off-white kitten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the boys have some questions for you, if that's all right, Bill. No, I only talked to the star of the show. Sorry, <laughs> fellas. All right, Fair well, enough. good yeah. luck with yeah. the rest of the editing of the movie. <laughs> Thank uh, the, you. I appreciate that. Tickets go on sale Friday, right? BillBird.com forward yes, slash tour. Do. I don't have it in my heart to be that mean. Let's hear from the boys. Oh, hey! Hey! You got a good heart. You got a good heart. Look at this guy. Go ahead, Ty. Bill, I know you mentioned everything kind of being the same, but like when you go play Fenway. Can you we'll... introduce yourself first? Is this how you enter into a conversation? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Well, he said my name. Are you fucking listening or not? <laughs> Jeez. I mean, oh, to... did he? No, I didn't. Yeah, oh, the yeah. white tiger was sleeping. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, but will like play in Fenway, will that feel any different? I mean, with like your, you know, connection to it and then obviously being the first comedian, like is that any different than any of your other shows? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be in the... I will try to take a moment or two to enjoy it, but I'm going to have to basically block it out while it's happening. 
so I can uh, give them a good show. But afterwards, when everybody leaves and I'm sitting on that stage smoking a cigar, that's when I'm going to take it in. Absolutely. How about a drum lesson up there, maybe? Huh? How about maybe a drum lesson? It's not going to sound as good as the form because you're outside. Yeah, but you're playing drums at the Fenway, you know? Maybe a little... Maybe a little pick up baseball. Game. Yeah. Oh. You playing baseball Ooh. out there? Maybe uh, with the boys, take BP out there. Can you, you rent- suggest another activity and act it out slightly again? <laughs> well, in my head, <laughs> I'm drumming. You did. You did the pitch cornhole. thing. Cornhole. You playing cornhole? You playing a little cornhole? Yeah. Playing a little cornhole out there? <laughs> That's how my brain operates. You know, like I'm in my head. I'm like, oh. no, I was thinking. I was thinking. I was gonna throw a javelin. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. This See is like get across. You know. At Fenway, yeah, maybe Twitter bio. Once through Javelin at Fenway Park. Will you change each set for the city? Like, will you do Boston stuff in Fenway to lead off? Like, how much time do you have for that? Like, in every city, do you do that? Or is it mostly, hey, they're paying for me to give them my best shit? No, I, I obviously do my best shit. But I kind of go out not really knowing what I'm going to say in the beginning. I like to kind of go out. My head's blank and just kind of go out and start screwing around and... Um, yeah, and then it kind of gets me going, and then I, then I, at some point, drop into doing my act. You know, I think most comedians, you almost try to avoid your act for as long as you can, because you're just having fun um, riffing, and then you kind of use your act as like, all right, that riff ended, now I need to go with something that I know works. You go to that, somebody yells something out, makes you say something else, and then you're, you're once again, you know free doing whatever you want to do and then you go back to your act you know yeah kind of a game you're playing with the crowd almost anybody that uh when people yell out you hate that or love that you have to hate um it, right? i love that it's a part of comedy i love and i i find i think it's it's one of the things that makes stand-up amazing is the interaction i like that i like the live experience i like the people like you know yell out i say a lot of stupid things i say a lot of things almost deliberately to annoy people like and at some point people can't you know hold it in anymore and they have to yell out and uh i have fun with that especially now because i used to do that young comic thing what'd you say uh, go fuck yourself i used to do that <laughs> but now it's more fun to like listen to them and just be like oh you know i never really looked at it that way and then you start interviewing them about their life and stuff and it becomes like you know something uh it doesn't it doesn't always have to be hostile Look at you, Bill, huh? Yeah. Wow. Caring, Ooh. empathetic, learning. Oh, God, that is, that, there wasn't one ounce of sincerity in any of what you just did. No, the what? white tiger. What? That's kind of his thing, though. No, AJ, that is not my You're like, thing. look at you. <laughs> wow. Really and doing it. the way you were clap, no, that clap right there is a, is a go, that is a fuck, that's not an ounce of sincerity, the way you're holding your hand. Yeah, Bill, we don't know each other that well, but it feels like you're learning me pretty quick. It feels like you're learning yeah, me. Yeah, that is just, that is ball breaking. <laughs> no, no, no. Sincerity. Honestly, though, that is a big deal because I've seen other comedians handle it much You realize you just started that, you said sincerity, and then you said honestly. About the like same. Like, how many more subliminal hints are you going to try to give me that you're not bullshitting me? Well, I'm trying to give myself it, too. Sincerity. Hey, I'm honesty. Tra- yeah, but integrity. I'm, I'm giving myself that, too. Thanks for coming on the podcast, Bill. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Don't send yourself out of here. Uh, Connor, go ahead. Yeah, Bill. Connor. Connor, Austin, yeah. Connor. Connor. From- Connor, how are you? Cornrow Connor, how yeah. are you? Perfect. Mollet, Mollet. Uh, also a Boston sports oh, fan. Yeah, Sorry, mo- my eyes are going. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, what do you think about the Celtics tonight? Are you watching at all? Do you give a shit at all? Or what do we think? Uh, yeah, I give a shit. I uh, what do I think? I think we, you know, uh, I think I haven't watched enough basketball to go on a sports podcast <laughs> and given an intelligent opinion. But um, I will say, I'll say, I, I will say this: find this clip, game seven, right at the end of the game, when they 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 sat the Greek freak, who, by the way, if you watch seven games, watching that guy, I mean, he's one of the most incredible athletes I've ever seen. So the Boston crowd is giving him a respectful, you know, ovation when he goes to the scene. And then one guy in the crowd, the most unathletic human being you could possibly see. And he was just going like he was just, he was going like this. Yeah. And it was just one of those things. Where it's just like <laughs> in a. Oh, oh no. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
White Tiger. <laughs> no. No. Oh, no. Such that was one of my favorite steak. things that ever happened. Oh, you're back. Hey, you froze up in the middle I'm of that. Back. You gave a great sports take, though. You, uh, sports podcast, great sports take right there. Hey, look at you. Hey. hey. There you go. Look at this guy. Oh, wow. Sports podcaster. Look at this. Look at you, Bill. Is that all right? Yeah, it was incredible. You judged uh, the game. You, you said Giannis, incredibly impressive to watch, which we all agree on. Mm -hmm. the oh, his first step is as fast as any point guard out there, it seems. He just, guy was fucking unstoppable. What about football? You um, keep up with football at all? Mac Jones, you think he's going to be a guy? I remember you sang us a little Christmas uh, song about the Colts fans going to cry or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, well, I mean, you know, this is, uh, you know, it's a copycat league there, Pat. <laughs> you know, it's a, uh, it's a now time. I mean, they, they got to give these kids a chance to grow. So, I mean, he, he's been one year in the NFL, and I thought for a rookie season he did great. So, you know, I mean, Josh Allen I don't think was lighting the league on fire his first year, and now look at the guy. He's very I good. love that guy. Yeah, he's very good. Who's your favorite player in the NFL? Josh? Well, you were until you retired. All right, that's <laughs> fucking bullshit. There is no sincerity in that comment right there. I'm sick of it, White Tiger. You hear me? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, all right, get back to work. We appreciate it. My, my favorite, uh, favorite player in the NFL right now, I don't know. Um... Uh, you know, I, as far as there's just certain people that I like watching play, I like uh, the offseason. So I'm going to forget everybody's name. Uh, who, who's, who's the guy, the quarterback of the Chargers? Josh. Uh, Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert. Josh. Justin Herbert. I like him. Um, and then there's just teams that I like. Like, I'd like to see the Browns do something. I like that they. I like Baker Mayfield. I think the guy's a friggin' winner. Oh. And it's like he, he led the Browns to a playoff and they got a victory. And, yeah. and there's still people trashing the guy. It's like, to do that in Cleveland. Cleveland is where, like, quarterbacks went to die. Well, one of the worst no, things no. to be over the last Bill, 30 years was a number one draft pick quarterback because you were going to Cleveland. Bill, Bill, I don't want to break any bad news to you, but Baker Mayfield's time is over in Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> He's out of there. He's oh, do they trade him? No, nah, he, well... It's a whole scene. I would really like you to actually invest in it and maybe get yeah. your thoughts on it. He asked to be traded. They say, nah, we don't care. We're not trading you. They then go sign Deshaun Watson to $230 million guaranteed. Quarterback from the Texans that obviously has a lot going on off the field that is very serious. And there's another trial, I think, happening here in like a month or so. Baker's still on team. Deshaun Watson's starter. But we don't know if he's going to get suspended in amount of games or not. Baker still wants to be traded. They don't know what's going on. So I don't want to be the one that breaks bad news. But that whole scene is really something in Cleveland. But to your point. Now you tell me... Tell me with all of that, yeah. if you had to guess one franchise in the league that that would be going down. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing shocking about that story. Exactly. Exactly. Same old Browns, but they might win. And that's why you're an incredible sports podcaster, Bill. Look at how you tied that thing mm, together. Wow. That's why every time you come on here, we get excited, elated, happy you could take a break from editing. Can't wait to see your tour. Can't wait to see your new special on June 6th. And thank you and come back. Hey, come back anytime, Bill. Yeah. Hey, Bill, come back anytime. Oh, that fucking passive aggressive clap. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be thinking about that tonight when I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't enjoy me. He no. trashed the white tiger the second I hung up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks hey, so much, man. I'll hey, see you. We appreciate you. Good luck with the tour. Good luck with the special agents. Oh, Jimmy. wait a second. Wait a second. I got I to give you one here. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I see you. Oh, thanks for coming. Hey, Bill, thanks for coming on, Bill. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Burke. Hey, always, yeah. always a pleasure. No, the pleasure's it's all always ours. Always a pleasure. No, it's ours. You're such an open spirit. You're honest, <laughs> integrity. Thank you. In all sincerity. You too, honestly, sincerely. Like, that's the no, same No, 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 but you. Genuinely, I feel that way about you, though. You're brave. You're a hero. <laughs> Courageous. You're a warrior. Just like you. It's awesome. <laughs> you know, I realize I'm not going to win this. <laughs> <laughs> You're more full of shit than I am. All right, I'll see you. Bill Burr. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What a fucking legend. Yeah. All right, let's get to a break. I don't know how you're supposed to transition into anything after that. Paper Tiger. Fuck. It's close. When you said it, I was like, yeah. White Tiger. I, seen the ti I didn't know we were going to be talking about that, obviously. That's on me. Every once in a while, there's a glitch in the Matrix. I knew it was fucking Tiger or something. White Tiger's sweet too, though. Yeah. Yeah, now you I just named it. his next special. <laughs> so this yeah. one's, this one, this tour is called Slight Return. <laughs> Bill Burr. <laughs> yeah. Slight Return. Doing like 25 <laughs> cities. Slight 
Jeez. We're almost back, but not really.